Hi everyone. It looks like we're live. So uh, welcome to a uh, live drawing. I'm Tiffany S. Devonzo, and today we're gonna spend a little bit of time working on a drawing and just kind of take our minds off of all the craziness that's going on in the world and have a little bit of fun. So for the first couple of minutes, I'll tell you about myself, and if you can chat and chime in, let me know where you guys are joining us from. Um, oh, wow, okay, I see people, I see it's happening. Norway, Netherlands, let me see, Florida, the UK, Malaysia, oh, this is fantastic. This is so great. So it's, um, I'm in, Tennessee, so I'm in the eastern U.S., so it's noon here, so um, I hope you don't hear my neighbors out mowing his yard, and it's just going to finally be a nice day. It's finally stopped raining, so this is my uh, studio or my office where I work, and so what I do, if some of you may not know, is I'm a medical illustrator which is a little bit why it looks like I'm in a museum back here with all the skeletons and skulls, but I um, draw medical textbooks. So um, surgery books and anatomy books and patient education, anything that kind of deals with the medical field um, is what I do on a daily basis. So I've got lots of <laughs> kind of creepy references back there. So, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, people are still joining. Okay, California, New York, Egypt, Berlin. Oh, my gosh, this is so great. L.A., India. Oh, this is fantastic. Um, I assume we're not having it. Can everybody hear me okay and see everything okay? Okay. Um, so, um... Oh, I see Robin. Okay, I see everybody popping in. This is fantastic. Okay, so we're going to um, draw this picture of Jeff, um, H. Jaggerty on Sketchy. And I thought we'd have a little bit of fun with it. I would draw a skull first. So I'm actually going to uh, draw the portrait on top of the skull. But if you're joining along with me, just, you know, do your own thing. Draw however you want. So. Um, let me switch my cameras around so you can see a little bit um, better. Give me one second here. Okay, so now we'll get that big. Let's get that reference photo up. Okay, now you can see our reference. Okay. All right, let's do this. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, I'll try to keep up. Um, I work by myself in the house all the time, so I'm very, very used to talking to myself. But I'd much rather hear from you all and answer any questions. Um, so, let's see. Oh, somebody's writing in from the hospital, so I hope you're well. I hope all of you are well. And... Um, just making the best out of this situation and spending time with your family and staying safe. So let's distract ourselves for a little bit. So, okay. So what I've got here is I've gone ahead and just drawn out a um, really light skull in graphite. And the way I've done this is I actually... Um, just used a light box and, and created the skull right off of his photo. So if you've um, taken my anatomy class on Sketchy, that's one of the um, first lessons we did, was learning how to relate some of the bony landmarks on our face. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to do today. Just one sec. Keep the comments coming. I already need another <laughs> drink. <clears throat> so, so that you can see it, I'm going to go ahead and use um, a blue colored pencil so it shows up a little bit better. I have a, I really like working on toned backgrounds. Um, I just get a little light here. It, it 
I like being able to work both ways. I like being able to go dark and I like being able to bring the light, the white in and work light. But I think the blue pencil will show up um, well on the brown paper. And certainly if you're one of those fantastic people that are so expert with the pens, which I'm just barely starting to learn, feel free to use a pen or something else. Okay, so when I start, I usually just start with a circle. And the circle to me for the head represents the cranium. So top of the head to um, just the bulk of the skull. So it usually hits about the bottom of the nose. <clears throat> and then from there, um, about halfway through, and this is, proportions are tricky, right? Because people are always looking slightly different ways, but about halfway through, it's gonna be the eyebrow line. That's about where it happens to fall here, so that works. And then the distance between the top of the head, not the hair, but the top of the head to the eyebrows should be about the same to the bottom of the nose and about the same again to the chin. Here, I've drawn my chin a little bit longer. I think just, I can't see his chin. <laughs> so maybe the beard's throwing me off, but I think his uh, head might be tilted just slightly back, which would make this part a little bit longer. So that's what I'm gonna do. And we're just going to go in and mark in some the ear level. And do another little circle for his nose. Kind of indicate where that is. And then for the eyes, um, this is the kind of stuff that makes me excited and kind of geeky. Do you see in his eye how perfectly that lid is, um, can I get it? there we go, how perfectly that lid is kind of showing the actual shape of the eyeball as it forms over it? So, let's see, hold on a second, let me move that, there we go. Um, that's the kind of stuff that gets me all excited. So I'm gonna just kind of draw that eyeball in. I may adjust these later, but for now, I'm just kind of centering it in that orbit there. And then what do I want to do next? So the lips, and again, I may change some of these, but lips usually fall, um, your top lip falls on your top teeth usually. And when you're working off a drawing of a skeleton or if you um, ever experiment and draw one on your own, you'll notice the teeth just look huge, right? Um, but that's just because we're not seeing any gum. So it's, I don't really think you have your teeth are this big, Jeff. Um, let's see here. So Polly asks, are we drawing the skull or the portrait? I would just draw the portrait. Just just draw the portrait. Um, I might even erase I might even erase the skull afterwards. Um, because my background's in anatomy, I just thought it'd be fun to throw a little bit of that in there. But by all means, just go go for it and draw the portrait. I'm pretty much done marking out my boundaries now, so now I'm gonna get into just the more normal, um, more normal portrait stuff. Okay, so up top, not drawing his hair, I'm just gonna start to add some thickness around the skull. Another thing I've done, <clears throat> which hopefully won't throw you all off if you're drawing along with me, is I've straightened the photo or I kind of hold it at an angle so that it's straight because um, 
because I'm working with proportions and trying to fit this in a school, I really wanted it to be symmetrical and up and down. But um, by all means, just go ahead and draw. He's got a slight little bit of head tilt there. And I'm just happen to be the kind of artist that likes to draw a little bit everywhere and then go back and add detail. So um, bear with me through the, the not so pretty phase. Now what's going to happen if I've done a bad job drawing my skull is your portraits are all going to look beautiful and perfect and mine's going to look crazy. So we'll see. <laughs> Just looking over to see where his beard cuts in here. So I'm really lucky and fortunate. I'm going to be one of the um, instructors for 30 Faces 30 Days. So I've already done my five tips and there's five other artists that are going to be um, sharing their own tips and their own unique styles. Uh, if you haven't done a 30 Faces 30 Days, it's super, super fun. Uh, I hope a bunch of y'all are already signed up. So, and I think you should be able to find all the links and everything down below. You go over to shop sketchy and sketchy art school and all the information's there, but it's going to be super fun. I'm just kind of still blocking stuff in. Yay, I see somebody signed up. All right, Annie says she's signed up. Fantastic. Uh, without giving away exactly what my tips are, um, most of mine are, are uh, have just a tiny bit of anatomy and use pretty basic tools. So just graphite, eraser, maybe a white pen, but they're fun. And I know I'm really looking forward to what everybody else is doing. Okay. So Probably he's going to end up looking like a pirate. Like, I, <laughs> I don't think we're getting away from that. I'm going to be drawing a pirate today. Oh, good. I see. Okay. Somebody else has signed up. Love the last one. And and he's and Houston. You took the class in January. Uh, let's see. Bright Art and Education says they took the class in January. There's a new one for April. It's going to start April 1st. So, if you took it in January, go over to Sketchy Art School, sign up for the April version. All new tips, all new teachers. Um, same, same great community. So when drawing eyebrows, right? Um, I'll try not to touch my face to show you this, but so the inner part of your eyebrow usually hits right here on the lower port corner of the orbit and then it extends up and then you have a little bit of rim of this orbital bone. That's what creates, you know, that nice height um, there. So in his case, he's actually using the muscles here. So he's pulling this eyebrow up and then he's slightly 
pulling this one down. I don't think I can do it with my face to pull one down and pull one up. <laughs> but this eyebrow is just a little bit lower. So I'm positioning it a little bit lower on that orbital rim there because um, he's making that great expression. Now the eye, so I've got my orbit penciled in here. Um, I'm just going to lightly sketch in the eye. There's that awesome fold of the eyelid right along that curve of the eyeball. Love that. I'm just double checking. I think I might have put those a little far apart, but we'll fix it. We see this nasal bone here. You can see he's got great, um, great shadows around his eyes. They really kind of follow that part of the bone there. Let's get down and do a little bit of the nose before I try and fix that. So where the nasal bone ends and the, the nasal cartilage ends, sometimes the nose gets just a little bit wider. Just gonna kinda. So once I get a little bit of everything in, then I'll go back and resharpen my pencil and see if I can get his lips a little bit. So 
So just curious, who's like me? Who likes to draw everything kind of badly and rough? <laughs> and who starts in on one area and like does a beautiful eye and then moves on to the other eye? And I know some people can polish off one area before moving to the next, but I'm like, it's all got to look like a hot mess for a while before I can fix stuff up. And there's usually a lot of erasing involved. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Vishal says, uh, what books will you recommend for anatomy study from an art perspective? Um, I have a couple that I love. Um, I don't, I don't love the ones that are specifically made for artists, but I'm always looking. Um, and if I come across one, <laughs> I will let you know. The, my favorite ones are just um, are Netter's Anatomy, which is a straight anatomy book. Um, and there's another anatomy book called Theme. Um, there is an anatomy for artists. I'm just looking over here. Um, if I don't remember, remind me at the end of the broadcast, I'll go get it and show it to you. But I, I do have several and I'm very happy to recommend um, things to anybody who's interested. Um, I do find that sometimes the anatomy for artists ones tend to uh, oversimplify things a little bit or um, focus too much on muscles and, and not quite enough on um, facial proportions and and the bony anatomy, which I think for portraits, it is. So I'm so glad if that is helpful for you. So fantastic. Uh, let's see. Okay, you found the reference. I see somebody's asking about the reference and found it. See, Robin, he's an area by area person. I see, I knew there were people out there. All right. Whole thing lightly. All over the paper, I, <laughs> me too. Gun Hill says everything at one go and then go back and fix. Yep, 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 yep. Bridgman's Anatomy for Artists, somebody's recommending. I don't know that one, but I'm, I will, I will look it up and I'll show you um, the ones that I have. But yeah, if anybody else has ones they like, um, because I'm so stocked on the medical version, I don't tend to have that many of the anatomy for artist types, but um, the, it's, you know, it's always helpful, I think. And I think a question that comes up a lot is, um, you know, do you, do you have to be really fluent in anatomy um, to be a good artist. And of course you don't, you know, it, you know, you're studying light, you're studying, um, movement proportions, however, you know, whatever's beneficial to you on your journey, but, um, it never hurts. It can only help. <laughs> so, so it's, um, it's a fun thing to kind of explore. I think, you know, as artists, we're really unique human beings because I just feel like we never stop learning or wanting to learn. Or, you know, for me, at least, you're never quite satisfied. You're always looking for that new way to add to your skills, to learn something new, if it's picking up a different medium or studying anatomy or learning to crosshatch, whatever it is, I think we're always trying um, to, to be better. And that's, um, that's actually why I took 
the January 30 faces, 30 days. Um, you know, because my job is to draw, uh, I don't always take time in the evenings to stop and do a, you know a pleasurable drawing or something just for fun so I thought I would try it and that it would be peer pressure and motivation and I wouldn't and it'd make me do it every day and it worked it worked very well <laughs> but I tried a lot of new things the last 30 faces 30 days a lot of new things Let's see, um, Polly Two Bears, oh my gosh, that's a great name, as asking how did I get into my line of work. Um, so I went uh, to school and I got uh, an illustration degree, but my grandmother actually, because I'm sure she was terrified that I was going to school to be an artist and not a, a doctor as I probably properly should have been she managed to find an article about a local artist who had gone into medical illustration so um, she convinced me to look into it as a possible career that might have a job <laughs> I know what she thought but I loved it because I was very interested in science um, and I, I did consider going to medical school but I just I just wanted to draw and um, so it was a really good mix for me to be able to kind of combine two things that that I really like to do uh, there are, are it's not a big field there are several schools um, in the US I think there's three or four now um, it, it changes and, and then there's um, some other ones across the world, but it's, it's not a very big field, but it's, it's really fun. I enjoy it a lot. What we had to do was we would take, you know, half um, art classes and then half of our classes were with the medical students. Um, we took gross anatomy and um, all that good stuff. So now I'm taking a little bit, taking the eye a little bit farther, you can kind of see how that cavity of the orbit works to um, influence where the shadows are. Another thing I normally do that I'm not doing today is I like to have um, like a life-size reference. So if I've got my iPad out, I'm zoomed in, so I'm going back and forth life-size. Today I'm working from a little bit smaller, so that's going to be my excuse for everything. <laughs> Anything that doesn't go right, I'm going to blame it on my small reference photo. I think what um, a downside of my job for me sometimes is I have a really hard time letting go and embracing the mistakes, you know, or um, realizing that it doesn't necessarily always have to be a perfect likeness. Not everything we're doing for fun is a commission. Um, 
accuracy is really important in the jobs I do. So I kind of have to get them right. And then I go to do a portrait. And sometimes I beat myself up when it doesn't quite look right. But bring that down a little bit, make that eye look a little sleepier. What is this expression? This I think it's kind of saying, what is happening? Are you kidding? No, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's what I feel like he's saying. I think one of my favorite things about the 30 days challenge is seeing all the different versions from the same um, inspiration photo and the same muse. Like people are so creative, you know, you have the same photo of the same person and there are so many different ways to express it. So, um, if you guys are drawing along with me, when you finish up your drawings, please post them on Sketchy Art School and tag me so I can see them. And the same thing if you, you know, if during a 30 faces, 30 days, if it's one of my tips, tag me because I want to see all of those. See, I told you, lots of erasing. <laughs> I'm so glad that people are looking forward to doing the next 30 paces, 30 days. I think there's several hundred people already signed up and hopefully once it starts, there'll be even more. Um, I know there were a ton on the last one and it was really fun. And I really loved having um, having a prompt, you know, just having a little bit of guidance should you choose to take it as to, you know, what to experiment with or what to try. And you 
knew this was going to happen. Made that nasal hole, hole too long and now it looks too long, but I'm sorry. Your nose is just going to be a little bit longer. You're just going to have to live with it. Tiffany drew the skull a little bit off. That's all right. So my goal for this 30 faces 30 days is to do more traditional art. Um, my job is is all digital. I don't know if you can see my big tablet back here. Um, but yeah, so I do a lot of digital stuff. So I, I want to have fun and, and get out the paper. That's what I'm going to try to push myself to. I'm just going to take an extra strong eraser to fix this. Make him a pirate. I made him a Neanderthal pirate. Gotta do some tweaking up here. Is anybody else trying to give themselves any kind of goals for if you're taking 30 faces 30 days or if you're not, if you're building your daily drawing habit. trying to see what time it is. I don't know. Let's try. I don't know if I've been talking for 10 minutes or two hours. So somebody cut me off if I need to. I'm going to have to deal with his forehead later. I want to get down and do something more fun. It's a lot easier to draw a skull from a person than to draw a person from a skull. I will tell you that. And hopefully it's kind of interesting.
So we're just going to say that I'm exaggerating his face lengthwise on purpose. Okay. Giving you a bit of a long face. And that saying, you can't talk and chew gum at the same time. Sometimes you can't talk as much as I am and draw at the same time. <laughs> okay, let's see. I see people chiming in. Let's see. Yes, um, Megan says she's looking forward to the progress that she knows will be coming. And that... That is the truth. That is the truth. I mean, because it is just, when you set a goal for yourself to just draw every day, you just, you would be amazed at how far you come. Like, you're just always learning. And here's one. I, I played E. Sorry, I'm not saying your name right. But as it wants to work more loosely and free up a little bit, yep, so you're not concerned with perfection, maybe I need to join you there. And relaxing and just remembering it's all about having fun, right? Uh, and Jenny Kessinger says she's thinking of, let's see, I'll throw it up here, trying to work more digital versus traditional. That's a fun a fun challenge. Um let's see and let's see. Polytubers is asking uh when I draw a skull do I trace it from a picture or do it freehand? Um both. So on this one um I actually did have his picture um near me um like kind of side by side and I kind of did a little drawing by hand and then I turned the light box on and I put the paper on top of that and just made sure everything lined up right. Um, a, a lot of guessing in his situation just because of the beard and not being able to see the jawline. Um, skulls are are super fun to draw but they are tricky in so much as there's always a lot of distortion when you photograph a skull like to get it so that the proportions seem to um, seem to work you really have to have that thing angled perfectly and if you're photographing it from on a skeleton it tends to tip down and if you have it setting on a table it's all the way back like this because it's resting on that back occipital bone. So you really need somebody either holding it perfectly or um, a stand or something. And with, you know, for artists, a little bit of anatomy knowledge goes a long way. Um, <clears throat> I do go into more depth in my uh, anatomy courses on Sketchy, but, you know, memorizing specific names um, of every single thing is not necessary, but knowing the general shapes of things is really helpful. So like on the ear, because I know the general um, structures, I know kind of what I'm drawing and what might be artifact or what might be um, left out. <clears throat> a lot of times you draw a photo and somebody's head is um, cut off the page, something like that. So if you know what it's supposed to look like, it's, it's beneficial. So 
So, uh, in the in the anatomy course on Sketchy, what I do is we start with a portrait or a photo, and then we draw the skull um, from that right on top of it, either with tracing paper or a light box, and then we go bone by bone through the skull and talk about all of them. This is not normally how I draw hair. <laughs> but my kids are at home and there's a lot of scribbling going on. And so I just want to get some darkness down so that I can get finish up the eyes here. So I always, even if it's blurry, I'm always... Um, kind of indicate those shapes in the crease of your eye, in the corner of your eye. One looks like a little glob, one looks like a half circle, and then a lot of times you have extra light there in the corner from, there's a tiny little ligament that connects it to your nose. So add a little light there. Trying to get far enough that I can come in and add some white before we run out of time or you all have to go get back to your busy lives. This eye seems to be very circular. This one seems a little bit more angular. Oh, thank you so much, Stacy, for joining us. Somebody's got to get back to work. Yeah, I appreciate everybody who's uh, here watching and drawing along. Um, these little get togethers are, I just, I think, just really necessary right now. It's nice to connect with people from all over the world. I think that's one of the things I like the most about being part of the sketchy community is you begin to feel like you've got this group of friends that you've never met, but really kind of can connect with through a common interest. I know that um, France is going to do another one of these drawings on Saturday. So we all have another chance to meet up again. Look 
looks so sad. Probably because he knows we can see his bones. I really don't have this forehead right, so just go fix it on your drawing. Let's see. I'll struggle with that later. Roberta, Roberta Mueller says she'll be handing in her portfolio for scientific illustrations in the Netherlands. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Um, Good luck, congratulations. You will really love the field. Um, medical illustrators, I get to do a little bit of scientific illustration, but not a ton, and it's a, just a fantastic field. I wish you very, very much luck in your career. Okay, and she's asking, um, what did I find most difficult during my studies? Um, while I was in school, um, some of the medical courses were, <laughs> were really, really intense. Um, for the artists, we found it difficult because in addition to taking the medical courses, we were also... Uh, you know, having to draw everything. So um, the medical students, we would laugh because they would always want to partner with us for gross anatomy because they knew that we would be sketching everything we were studying and then we'd give them drawings. So, <laughs> um, but I, I think the, the toughest part was just finding a way to um, balance balance my time and learn learn all the medicine without forgetting that my true purpose was to really um, be able to communicate it visually. And then after I finished, the hardest part was explaining to people that I was not a medical doctor. <laughs> and I cannot give you any kind of medical advice at all. I can draw it, but I, that's where it ends. All right, so let me get to something else because I know we're, I've been talking and drawing for a while. And I've got some things here that are going to drive me crazy, but I'll fix them later. I get to the dessert. So white is the dessert for me. White is my favorite thing. I just feel like that's that's what makes your portrait come alive, even even if it's imperfect. I'll have to decide if I'm going to leave some of these skull lines in or go back and erase them. I'll leave them in for now.
that orbital rim there catches so much light. I always put a nice highlight there. This drawing is a little bit like putting on makeup, right? That's where you got to put your highlights. do too much to his forehead until I fix it. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any last questions? Comments? Is everybody who's not signed up yet going to go sign up for 30 faces? It's going to be fun. So between the different instructors, I think there's a lot of good variety in style. So you're going to get something interesting every day, I promise. I might have to come in here with a darker blue, get some of these deep shadows in my pirate drawing here. Uh, so Polly is asking, saying she missed the beginning. Um, it, it will be posted on YouTube, so you'll be able to watch the whole thing um, once we're done. And I'm sure Sketchy will take care of all that. So Natalie has a funny comment. Return to school to become a physical therapist after art and life drawing. Nine months of cadaver dissection. That's longer than I even had until I understood hands and feet. So, yeah, uh, hands and feet. Oh, my gosh. Super complicated, right? I, um, I do a lot of hand illustrations for hand surgery. And, uh. Right now I'm working on a book called um, Wide Awake Hand Surgery, where they actually operate under anesthesia, but the patient is um, awake. So as they're operating, they can move their hand and the uh, surgeon knows whether he's working in the right area and that the nerves are spared and it's really fascinating. So when I finish this up, I'll post it on Sketchy Art School. So you can see, I might even, maybe I'll even pull it into Procreate and erase the bones or something. So I have a couple different versions. Um, we'll see what I get up to. I'll, ex I'll do some experimenting. I gotta fix. Um, let's see. Polly T. Bear says, can we see your illustration somewhere? Yes, of course. I'm on Instagram under Slayball Studios. 
Um, that is mostly my um, portraits, a um, lot of sketchy stuff there. And my website is slaybossstudios.com. And that's where all my medical illustration is. So yes, I'd love it um, if you checked it out. Um, Slave is my maiden name, so that's why if you're wondering why the weird name. All right. Um, I think we've been drawing about an hour. Is that right? Sketchy. Um, I can keep going, but I know y'all probably have a lot of fantastic things to do out there. And I really just wanted to take a little bit of time to connect with everybody and um, say thank you, to be honest, because I just love being a part of this community and having the chance to uh, meet so many fantastic artists and see their process and watch them work and um, you know it's it's just been really great so um, let me see if I can get this to switch back okay there now I can say <laughs> goodbye properly so thank you so much um, Please sign up for 30 Faces 30 Days. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see your drawings. Uh, if you drew with me today, please post it on Sketchy Art School and tag me so I make sure to see it. And um, stay safe, all right? Stay safe and remember you've got a great community out there. None of us are alone in this, so let's, let's just get together next month and create some great art, okay? Thanks.